Hello, it's Peter. Um, this video is to demonstrate how the FANIC robot communicates to your Rockwell Automation PLC. So there's a whole lot going on in this screen right now. I'm going to start with focusing on the communication settings between the FANIC robot and the Rockwell PLC. Uh, so first of all, uh, you have to add the FANIC robot to your PLC's Ethernet. So here's my ENTT PLC card in my rack. It creates this Ethernet card. You create a generic Ethernet module for the PLC. Uh, please go with the IP addressing you have in your documentation. Um, yeah, this is a little different for my uh, virtual robot to physical PLC. Uh, so again, focus on the PLC address that you are given for your capstone project. Uh, then I have some logic here. And uh, this logic uh, I'll come back to later. So we're going to focus on just the digital inputs and outputs. So after you created this uh, module, and you can see here I named this FANIC ENET, so for Ethernet, that creates tags. So here's your FANIC ENET. Here are my inputs, my outputs. And uh, over here, you can see, you know, in this screen, I have the digital outputs on the FANIC robot. Uh, this is the monitor screen that you're typically in. If you press this config button, you can see you can config uh, a range of uh, uh, outputs and map them to Ethernet. So rack 89 is Ethernet IP. Uh, slot one, and I'm starting at point 12 for the digital outputs because the first 11 points are used for the user operator signals like uh, IMSTP, hold, cycle start, fault reset, uh, and uh, other items yeah, that we'll come back to later. Um, this should already be set. You can verify this. These numbers may vary in your system uh, you just have to figure out okay which one of these inputs and outputs you know corresponds to my tag in my plc uh, the easy, easiest way to test this is digital outputs here on the robot side they're received by the plc as inputs so i go into my enet uh, i I'm going to go to zero and you can see i already have all these labeled here of what they are and you can see, yeah, starting with point 11, which is the 12th signal, um, I can uh, see uh, uh, coming in from the robot. So this is coming from digital output 185 from the robot. Uh, I'm going to use this a different one because I have some logic tied to that. Uh, I'm going to go to DO186. I'm going to be sure to cursor on the on-off signal. So if I turn this output on in my robot program, you can see it's received here as yeah, uh, input data 0 uh, bit 12. So this would be digital output 186 from the robot. So I can turn this back off. I can switch to my inputs on the digital outputs side. I have to uh, scroll down quick to 185. So here again, you see uh, I have inputs on the FANIC robot. It's important to remember that you know these you cannot easily turn on because they come into the robot. Okay, so anything comes into the robot comes out of the PLC. So here I go to my ENET zero data, and here's my uh, uh, outputs, and you can see I have these mapped to some uh, user operator interface signals again uh, and same as the uh, uh, signals coming from the robot uh, if I send something to the robot so here's my signal uh, 12 and uh, uh, since this is an output from the PLC I can turn this on in the PLC I can simply type a 1 in here you can do this as long as it's not tied to any logic type a 1 and you can see here on the FANIC side, the input is received. DI-186 is received. Uh, so this is how you can uh, uh, send something from the PLC to the robot, uh, which in this program you see here, um, I'm going to run this in just a second. 
uh, you can see I'm already, uh, yeah, there's a wait statement and it says, you know, wait for the digital input 185 to turn on. Yeah, so I'm waiting for the PLC signal before I run this routine. When I'm done running the routine, I turn on DO185 from the robot. Okay, here's my command to turn it on. And that the robot, the PLC will receive that and they can trigger the next step, the next phase, the next sequence. Um, the start stop is a little different than what you will find on your physical robots. Uh, I still have these signals here. So uh, be sure to uh, uh, focus on what you will have on your physical robots. Uh, I got to change this back so you can see. I also have to uh, move this down a little bit because I created a HMI uh, up here. I want to be sure you can still see the uh, uh, fault signals here. And uh, so here, yeah, this is a push button that resets any faults. Uh, so, you know, there is a uh, yeah, physical push button on your cell. When you press that, yeah, you can uh, uh, set that signal to send the reset command. Same as you said, the same com command that you would press in the physical teach pendant. Um, so when I press this, this signal is seen and my fault is reset. Uh, next, yeah, we have to make sure that all our um, uh, systems are ready to go. So, yeah, there are a couple of commands that the owner have from the robot that tells me that the robot is ready. Uh, that's because I'm sending these four signals to the robot. This is something that uh, you do not have to do right now. Uh, we'll come back to this later. I just want you to understand where the system ready signal is coming from. Um, I'm also looking at this uh, uh, faults. So there is a fault, um, yeah, which is our safety relay. So I have to reset and this button up here uh, is indicating to me that, hey, there's a present, there's a fault present and you have to reset that fault. Once I reset that fault, I have an internal indicator that says, yep, all systems go, no faults presence. So I press this. Okay, that tells me now I'm reset, safety is good, which uh, gives me this run signal. And that also sets for my virtual version, uh, which program to run yeah, using a particular startup method. Yours can be much simpler, which is just the cycle start signal down here. So next I have an HMI push button yeah, to robot start. So when I press the start signal down here, um, you're going to see the UI6 come on. And yeah, you know, once it goes off, you can see that it jumps to one. Yeah, this looks for a signal transition from true to false. So it doesn't start running when you turn it on. It starts running from the transition from when it was true and it goes false. Okay, so now it receives the start signal. Robot is at this wait position right now, but it's because it's waiting, you know, for this DIA185 to turn on. Which, uh, think about a part coming down the conveyor. The part comes down the conveyor and the sensor sees the part. The robot sees the signal. Okay, so this is the signal the uh, robot would receive. And I have to turn this on. I have an HMI button to turn this on, which sends the output to the robot, which sees it as DI-185. So once it sees that signal, you're going to see the robot do some quick circles. Uh, yeah, really no particular motion. When it's done, it turns on 185, which is this signal down here, which I just have an internal tag to tell me, yep, it is done. Okay, so I'm going to click the part present. Now the robot starts running. And uh, it's going to complete its motion. Once it's completed running, you can see the signal come on that tells me, okay, the part was loaded. Now I can uh, do the next thing and maybe turn the conveyor back on. So this is a quick overview of you know, the exchange of digital inputs and digital outputs between a FANUC PLC and, I'm sorry, a FANUC robot and a Rock Automation PLC. It's important you have your processor configured, important you have your Ethernet module configured uh, based on the instructions I gave you. And uh, yeah, there's some additional settings we may have to double check in your uh, robot controller. 
uh, but for the most part that should all be set from previous projects and uh, again this focus is just on the exchange of inputs and outputs between plc and robot yeah on the digital outputs digital inputs all right that's all i got thank you